Hi guys, today I'm going to talk about how hydrostatic and colloid osmotic pressure influence glomerular filtration pressure, which in turn affects glomerular filtration rate. Okay, this diagram shows the nephron, which is functional unit of kidney. For information, filtration occurs at a place known as renal corpuscle, which consists of glomerulus and also Bowman capsules. There are three main pressures to control glomerular filtration rate in renal corpuscle, which are capsular hydrostatic pressure, glomerular hydrostatic pressure, and also colloid osmotic pressure. So what are the main difference between these three types of pressure? As for glomerular hydrostatic pressure, is the pressure is the blood pressure in glomerular capillaries and it promotes filtration by pushing the water and also solutes out of the glomerular capillaries. As for capsular hydrostatic pressure, is the hydrostatic pressure exerted against the filtration membrane by fluid already inside the capsular space and other renal tubule. It opposes filtration by pushing water and solutes into the glomerular capillaries. As for colloid osmotic pressure, is the osmotic pressure due to the presence of suspended proteins. It also promotes filtration by pushing water into the glomerular capillaries. Filtration pressure. Filtration pressure is also known as the net pressure. It is the average pressure forcing water and solutes out of glomerular capillaries and into capsular space. The equation below shows that how you get the filtration pressure value. For your information, the hydrostatic pressure is much more higher in the glomerulus than in ordinary capillaries. And why this happened? Actually, it's because of the size of efferent arterial is much more smaller compared to the efferent arterial. Blood will leave the glomerular capillaries and flow into the efferent arterial. And because of efferent arterial is much more smaller, it offers considerable resistance which increases the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. GFR. GFR is the amount of filtrate produced by kidney per minute and it always exists in a unit of milliliter per minute. GFR is directly proportional to FIV. So um, when GSP increase, GFR will increase also. Whereas for uh, CSHB and also COP, when they decrease, the GFR will increase. Here comes to the important part of our topic, which is the control of glomerular filtration rate. There are three interacting levels to control GFR, which is the autoregulation, hormonal regulation, and also autonomic regulation through sympathetic pathway. Okay, by right when there is a changes in blood pressure and blood flow, there will be a changes in GFR. But by changing the diameter of efferent and efferent arterial and diameter of glomerular capillaries, the GFR can be maintained. For example, there is a reduction in blood flow and glomerular blood pressure. It will trigger the dilation of the efferent arterial, relaxation of cells and dilation of glomerular capillaries and also constriction of efferent arterial. And these three effects will bring down the blood flow and elevates the glomerular blood pressure to normal level. Hence, the GFR will remain constant. Another example is the systemic blood pressure rises. When there is rise in renal blood pressure, the wall of efferent arterial will stress and the smooth muscle cell will contract. This will result in reduction in diameter of efferent arterials which lead to decrease glomerular blood flow and keep GFR in normal rate. This is a recap how changes in GFR by constriction or dilation of efferent arterial and also efferent arterial. Hormonal regulation of GFR. It is regulated by renin angiotensin pathway and natriuretic proteins. For information, juxta glomerular complex releases renin. This renin will cause the decreased blood pressure at the glomerulus stimulation of juxta glomerular complex by sympathetic innovation and also decreased osmotic concentration of the tubular fluid at the macular densa. And this is the general mechanism of hormonal regulation of GFR. Diagram shows how hormone of renin 
angiotensin system regulate GFR. When there's decreased blood flow to kidneys, there will be production of renin. Renin will convert angiotensin into angiotensin 1, but it is still inactive. Then angiotensin converting enzyme, which is ACE, will convert angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. Where angiotensin 2 will cause different effects at different parts of the body. Anyhow, the combined effect of angiotensin 2 is an increase in systemic blood volume and blood pressure to restore of normal GFR. For example, at the nephron, angiotensin 2 causes constriction of the efferent arterial. Thus, it will increase the blood pressure at the glomerulus and also increase the filtration rate. Besides, it will cause increased absorption of sodium and water at the proximal convoluted tubule. AMP stands for atrionatriuretic peptide, which is released by the atria, and BMP stands for brain natriuretic peptide, which is released from the ventricle. The release of AMP and BMP are triggered by increase of blood volume. It will cause the efferent arterioles to dilate and the efferent arterioles to constrict, and this will result in increased blood flow and increased hydrostatic pressure, which both cause increased filtration and lead to increased urine production and a decrease in blood volume. Autonomic regulation of GFR. This regulation will cause sympathetic activation which has one direct effect on GFR only. First, it will constrict efferent arterioles, which lead to decrease of GFR and resulting in slowing down on production of filtrate. This kind of regulation will trigger by acute blood pressure decrease and also heart attack. For example, on a hot day, there's a decrease of blood flow to the kidney due to dilation of efferent arterial. And this will cause declines of glomerular filtration temporarily. But anyhow, these changes can be counteracted by varying decrease, degrees via hormonal and autoregulatory measures.